Hello everybody, Lord Almighty here. Today is Sunday, April 24th, 2016, and I am here at Mohawkaway Creek trying to do some small stream trout fishing. Conditions are actually not ideal for this sort of thing today. The water is super low and super clear, which means the fish are going to be wary and will spook very easily. The margin for error is going to be extremely slim, so hopefully I can either get my act together or get lucky and score a few small stream trout today. There's a fish. What have we here? This, that's a, that's a wild brown. Come on, buddy. And that is my first trout of the year. And he was barely hooked. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful wild brown. And there he goes. There's another fish. What have we here? Another little wild brown. This one is small and kind of on the scrawny side. Beautiful spots on him though. Back you go. I'm using a Panther Martin spinner uh, because it's a more compact size and uh, the blade spins very easily at slow retrieves. And that can be crucial in small streams, especially when you're making an upstream presentation like I'm doing right now. Even when you're bringing that lure back in with the current, that blade is still turning. When you're fishing small streams like this, the importance of certain skills become amplified. Uh, the two biggest, I would say, are casting accuracy and the ability to carefully plan your approach. But really the same rules for fishing larger streams applies to smaller streams as well, only on a, on a much more reduced scale. So if you see a feature on a small trout stream, you know, take a look at it and ask yourself, you know, if that feature was scaled up like, you know, 5 or 10 scale, would you expect there to be a fish there? And if the answer is yes, then you definitely want to focus on those areas. Because in these small streams, there are usually much fewer places for fish to hide. So if you see a likely spot, there's a very good chance that there is actually a fish there. Another thing you should also consider when you're fishing small streams like this is visibility. You should always assume that if you can see the fish, the fish can see you. So when you do go fishing these little creeks like this, especially when the water is really clear, um, it's a good idea to wear muted colors. Um, for example, uh, a lot of the times when you see me fishing, I'll be wearing a bright red windbreaker. Uh, that would not fly today because these fish would see me from a mile away. So instead, I'm wearing this, uh, this gray fleece pullover um, and paired with the, uh, the brown waders that I'm wearing it uh, blends into the environment a little bit better and uh, a second point is to whenever you can always stay low you know crouch down sit down uh, because the lower you are the uh, the the more out of a fish's cone of vision you are and the less likely it will be to spot you there's a fish
You see what I did there? I made a really long cast to that little riffle there. Because I didn't want to get right up on it and possibly spook out any fish there. There's another little, little wild brown. He looks a little... Looks a little skinny, but maybe he'll fatten up once the once the hatches start up in earnest. Boy, this place is really washed out. I haven't been here in a few years. There was only about two holes left that I actually remembered. The rest was just washed out, flattened out. Not making excuses for why I haven't caught more fish, it's just that's the way it is right now. Check it out. There's a beaver right there. There's his lodge right there. Okay, so I only had a couple hours to fish today. Um, I worked all the way down to where the creek dumps into the reservoir and I worked back with a different lure. Uh, did not get any other fish. Uh, I turned a few, but did not get any hookups. Uh, the fish were super duper spooky. I had one, maybe two chances at them before they bolted for cover and shut down completely. So given that I was able to land three browns today, I'd have to say that's success given the conditions. Um, it may not seem like much, but when you have ultra low, ultra clear water with bright overhead sun, um, those are about the toughest conditions you're going to run into when you trout fish. Um, you know, I, I almost prefer like really high, really muddy water because in a case like that you can tie on a spinner or a, a little plug and the fish can find it by their vibration and you don't have to worry about your approach. But in a case like this, they feel one errant vibration, they see one shadow go overhead and they are just down and out and they don't want anything to do with anything. So anyway, that's kind of how I approach this type of situation on a small stream. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Maybe you can try it out on uh, one of your favorite small streams. Uh, if not, well, at least I hope you enjoyed the beautiful scenery as much as I did today. So regardless, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you on the next adventure.